cross contour. Um, I'm not going to do a full class evaluation of everybody's pieces because we're looking at three times 25. So we 75 uh, critiques. It's uh, quite a bit. Um, it took me a half hour to just do, um, I think, less than 25 last week. So um, <clears throat> I think it would be overboard. But I want to talk about some common problems that I've seen. And uh, one of those is inconsistent line weight on the external contour. Uh, I'm going to draw an apple real quickly. Very light on top. So I get down, I increase my volume. We got some funny shapes at the bottom of the apple, and then we get lighter as we get to the top. Here's our little stem. Uh, vary that line weight. You know, thick where it's weightier and heavier, and possibly more in the shadow. Lighter where the highlights are hitting where it's lighter it's up higher on the form uh, one item that I'm also noticing is uh, when you're wrapping the form you're not fully wrapping the form think of uh, wrapping all the way around it um, come from the far edge behind where you can't see and then bring it in as if I'm grabbing around the other side of the form, finding the string and pulling it in. Rather than going to an edge and coming straight in. Uh, the edge makes it flatten out if we just go to the edge. But if we go behind it, our hand naturally pulls it in. These little pieces that I, I'm, I'm showing there, the tails from the other side, uh, they're actually uh, going to help me to define that form. And even when we get in here with these, these funny forms down below, um, we can wrap those to vary our line weight. And I'm going to wrap at a different angle coming in but each line describes that form in a different way though you see I'm going down into the dip now I'm coming out of the dip Okay, now I'm, I'm wrapping not necessarily all the way around it anymore. I'm, I'm actually hitting the interior, but I'm, I'm describing the shape of that interior with my lines. It's still curved. And you notice what's happening here? It's actually building up what would be a shadow. And this is the beginnings of modeling a form. These cross contour lines lead to modeling. Uh, dis very descriptive. Uh, descriptive form is not necessarily about the shadow line, it's about the way any lines interact with our subject. Not necessarily about light and shadow, more about the form itself. And as I build and build my descriptive lines around the form. I'm wrapping with my eye. And you notice it becomes apparent that it's it's got form, it's got shape, it's it's got life. Alright, that's cross contour. There is uh, our second half of our um, Oh, one thing I forgot. This, my friends, describes nothing. And I'm seeing a lot of folks putting a little horizontal line. Uh, it really does not describe anything. Uh, because, just like 
our apple or our banana that we drew, um, the table that it sits on also has a contour. It may not be a round contour, but it is a perhaps a flat contour. So if you were to create contour lines for the table that it sits on, it becomes descriptive. We all know that this is now a flat surface that it's sitting on. I can angle the other descriptive lines. They don't all have to go in the same direction, but they do all have to describe flatness. And you'll notice that what they also do is begin to describe the, uh, the weight of this and the shadow in a way that it says this is a flat plane. And this is a round form. R M. So I hope that helps. Um, describe the forms and helps you understand the idea of cross contour and what why it's important uh, and it becomes important when we begin to do things like our uh, third item which would be our uh, our shoe yeah get rid of this stuff here delete and I'm going I'm looking at a shoe right now uh, on my desk and when we look at items like cross contour, the line coming in to the form, describing, I know this shoe looks funny, but it's got an expandable webbing here, so I'm not really going into the form. I'm letting the line come in and then go back out. See how goofy my shoes are and how bad my taste is. I apologize. But uh, these are the shoes I own. Oh, my line is off there. I have to correct it. Got a little change in weight there. Now there's an interior line that goes from I know these are ugly shoes but they are what they are and I have some cross contour lines that I'm beginning to throw in that are interior that represent um, some of the folds that are happening in the leather and I can become more descriptive with it as I build I'm changing the weight in spots to um, describe the weight of the form and how it sits there's some leather folding here that goes on the shoe definitely sits a lot of weight on the on the soles. And so I've got a bunch of weight down low. Okay, and now I'm going back up to the top and I'm kind of lightening up this one line because it says more weight than I want it to say. Uh, that is a very light spot in the shoe, uh, although it does have some detail things going on. I don't want to get too into that because that's more surface. My external line, light to dark, light to dark. Try wrapping from around the other side and in. You see it begins to uh, take on a personality to the line, the external contour line. So that's my shoe.
want to show you that I'm doing the homework too. Um, now I'm also going to throw in some descriptive horizontal lines here which will describe the table that it sits on and you know the temptation is to draw the sole black and uh, maybe if I have paint stains I might I might be tempted to do um, you know dots of paint or drips but that really doesn't describe the form we need to be very careful as far as what we're describing at this point uh, cross contour and uh, contour lines that enter in they're descriptive however items such as um, surface treatment are not descriptive not at this point uh, when it comes around to the final surface drawing yes maybe so uh, but that is the for number three um, of our assignment this week that's how uh, I would approach it. Our first assignment, the blind contour, uh, that was a lot of fun. Uh, and it's, it's getting us to slow down, look hard, and uh, try to pace our eye with our hand. Uh, and the more that we try to do those sorts of exercises, the uh, more accurate we will become. So don't let that discourage you. I saw some beautiful hands there. I saw some beautiful gestural lines. Um, you may think they look funny, but I, I think they really do show that you're looking hard. And that's, that's what we need to do, is really study the form. Really just suss it out with your, your eye and your hand and take your time. Uh, it's not something you want to rush through. Um, nobody, nobody who is a master at painting or guitar or uh, even yodeling uh, became a master overnight. It takes hours and hours of practice. So I encourage you to take the time, put in the time and the effort, and it will show in your drawings as you develop. Thank you so much, and uh, I'll talk to you next week.